What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Y'all already know what time it is. We back with another story time. You already know the vibes. Go ahead and sit back, relax, grab your snacks, and tune in for this tea. Hey, don't get fucked by none of that shit. By none of that shit. Don't get fucked by none of that shit. Okay, getting right up into the video, y'all already know I gotta do the small business promo before we get started. So, the first small business promo shout out goes to Impressed by Shay. So, Impressed by Shay sells press on nails. She sent a little handwritten. Oh, okay, it's a lot, okay. She said, hey girl, first and foremost, thank you so much for giving small businesses a place to promote their business. I definitely appreciate it. I love watching your channel, especially story times. I make and sell custom press-ons. I sent you two of my most popular sets. Your subscribers can use the code O oh, that's T for 20% off Shay with a little heart. Thank you, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for even giving me the opportunity to promote your small business. Like I love getting y'all businesses out there. This is a first set. These are real cute. Ignore my nails. I need to have these on. Okay, so this is the second set and these are reflective. These aren't all the nails. It's two more of these in the bag. But oh my God, I was so upset because these are so cute. They're reflective. I can't show y'all because the reflective nails like only work with like a flash. So basically you take a picture and the flash is on, it's gonna be real cute. But I was so mad because there's more in here, but none of them really fit my fingers. I know y'all see these chalky heads. I got wide nail beds, so bitch, I'ma find this, um, <laughs> I'ma find this reflective polish, acrylic, whatever it is, and I'ma give me some reflective nails, okay? But these are still so cute. These are actually my favorite. Okay, the next small business promo shout out goes to Beauty by Jonte. So she sent a thank you. And she also sent a little handwritten. She said, hey T, thanks so much for the promo. I love your story times. Your followers can save 20 with the code YouTube. So y'all, everything will be in the description, all the links to their website. You guys can save 20% off with both companies when you use the codes. Uh, the codes will be in the description as well. Y'all, y'all look at this. Uh, I know I just said I ain't going on vacation, but now I wanna go on vacation. Let's take my little purse out. This is the cutest little purse. This the cutest little purse. Look at this. It's so shimmery and glittery. I love this. Girl, do you make kid purses? Okay, not tequila, of course. But just like little purses for little kids. I'm gonna DM you. I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna definitely need this. So she makes handmade oils. It has the ingredients on the back. Okay. This is rose and hibiscus oil. Oh, and it's for your hair. It has rose petals in it. I really like oils. Wait, that you smell my nose? <laughs> I really like oils that, that don't smell like artificial fragrance. Like I want it to smell like oil because I feel like oils or anything that don't smell like super artificially, like, you know, scented, I feel like they just do their job for real. You know, y'all know I love me some lashes. Ignore my nails. Um, okay, my daughter gonna love this because she loves bath bombs. And I'm guessing this is um, Fruit Loop. It's sealed up in another one. But, oh, it do, it do. It smells like Fruit Loop. <gasps> oh, Black Lives Matter. Y'all, I love, y'all, I promise I didn't even do this. Like, I have a Black Lives Matter shirt on right now. And she gave me a Black Lives Matter keychain. It's going on the keys, yes. And um, she sent the lip gloss. This is one of like, the lip glosses that have like the little, little fruit things in it. Once again, thank you to the owners of Impressed by Shay and Beauty by John Tay. Thank you so much for sending over your products. Everything y'all need to know about these two companies will be in the description box below. Okay, so let's get into the video, y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna start. This is not how I wanted to introduce the call center series, but I just wanna talk about this one person. Oof. I was trying to wait until that part of my life got a little older, but I just want to talk about this one dude. So this is not actually gonna be the official introduction to the call center because I'm not really gonna talk much about the call center. This is really more about the dude. So every company has like a peak season. Like for when I worked at Party City, their peak season was obviously like Halloween and kind of Christmas. 
and like Walmart, their peak season is um, around the holidays, Black Friday, Christmas and stuff like that. So the peak season for the company that I worked at, it was around like Thanksgiving, Christmas and stuff too. So I got hired at like the end of November. We went through training, then we got thrown into the wolves. So all the people got thrown into the fishbowl and they called where we worked at the fishbowl because it was like so out in the open. Like other departments had like little areas and you know, they could close the door or you know, it just wasn't out. It wasn't as out in the open as our it was like anybody could walk by and see us working like basically it was this big room with like i think two or three different departments in there and i don't really try to be too social on the job like i'm not here to make friends i don't know who get jobs to make friends but i'm not here to make friends i started noticing this dude that sat like right across from me always staring and looking at me and i was just like what the fuck? and it was kind of creepy like i don't know if he thought that was sexy or what but it was giving creepy so one random ass day we in december now with the job i get a message because how we communicated in the call center we communicated over like skype chat all the new people was in a separate chat the old people was in the chat and then like managers and shit was in both chats or you could chat them one day i get a random ass chat from somebody and he was like hey what's up i've been peeping you and i think you're really pretty I was like, who is this? Because I literally don't know anybody. We knew as hell, everybody that I came in with. We knew, we don't know nobody. Nobody knows our name. So how did you find me on Skype? You would literally have to know my first and last name and look me up. So I'm like, who is this? And he was like, what can we call him? Who a cheater? Okay, so we gonna call him Kirk. So he was like, yeah, my name is Kirk. Look up and I'm going to wave at you. So I look directly up and it's the nigga that's been staring at me all creepy for the for like a few days. So I'm like, oh, okay. Like, how did you find me on Skype? Let me tell you what this nigga said. Because this is baby stalking in the workplace. And I should have just reported it and ended it there. So this nigga came to our supervisor's desk she has like a seat not a seating chart but it's a chart no it is a seating chart she had like a seating chart with everybody in our department name and like where we're seated at right so he counted on the chart like one two three four five you know six whatever until like the number of like where i'm seated at matched up with my name and that's how he found my first and last name nigga i don't want you to know my first and last name i'm like when he told me that i was just like what the f i didn't skype back because one i'm doing my job i don't have time to be skyping you all day i don't know you i don't want to know you so I don't Skype back, I'm answering calls, whatever. At this call center job, you had to know how to multitask. Like you really did. So I'm doing a lot of shit. I'm new, I don't even have this down pack yet. Leave me alone, I don't have time to Skype you. So he sends another Skype. He was like, yeah, I think you're really pretty though. Thank you. So yeah, a few days go by, everything is normal, nothing to worry about, right? I guess this the thought because we Skype that one time he could approach me as I was leaving, going home from work. So my shift was 10 to seven. So I got off at 7 p.m. Mind you, this is December and it get dark. It's dark by the time I leave. And I'm walking out by myself. Like I don't know nobody. I don't talk to nobody. Nobody finna wait on me and we, we gonna walk out together. So I'm walking out by myself. Mind you, walking out by myself, I didn't, I wasn't scared. I didn't think nothing of it because like it's a, it's an okay lit area and there's like people around. Everybody, everybody working 10 to seven is leaving at this point. So tell me why I'm walking out. Five seconds later, I hear the door open. I look back, it's him and he walking out. I usually park in like the back entrance. So the back entrance, you like, say this is the door, you walking out, then you gotta walk down like a little rail thingy. And then, you know, there's this parking lot. So this day I parked right in front of like the um, the little, the rail thing you gotta walk down. So all I had to do was walk straight. I didn't have to make no turns this way or that way and walk because this parking lot was big as hell. And then if you walk all the way down, there was a parking garage. I'm like halfway down the rail thing. This nigga come up and he was like, Hey, yeah, so you new here, huh? You new. You know I'm new here, nigga. 
yeah, so what department you work in and blah, blah, blah. Like you can clearly see what department I work in. Like it's a big room, but the departments are separated. They're separated into like three like different areas. And you can see what area I work in. You've been working here for a long time. Come to find out, I didn't know that. But you know what department I work in. Yeah, he talked to me. He was like, yeah, let me walk you to your car. I don't need you to walk me to my car. I'm like, my car is right there. I don't need you to walk me to my car. I'll walk out to my car at this time every night and nothing happens to me. I got this pepper spray. I don't need you, sir. He was like, you ain't gotta be fake mean to me and da 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 da. Mind you, I wasn't even being mean. I wasn't, I didn't have this type of attitude. Like I never, I never try to have an attitude with men that I don't know trying to approach me. As women, we feel like we have to be nice or at least like cordial so we don't get murdered. These, these fragile male egos, they get hit hard. And as soon as you reject them, they wanna shoot you or some shit. It's a shame that we don't even feel safe telling a nigga no because we are genuinely not interested or we are already in a relationship. That's just a little side note. So yeah, basically he was like, yeah, let me help you get into your car. Trying to open my door for me and stuff. Then before he closed the door, he was like, can I have your number? I said, no. He said, why? I said, I'm already in a relationship. Mind you, let me actually put this in because this is the only reason why I ended up entertaining this bullshit. At this point in my relationship, I was like, I was miserable. And then I just felt like I was doing everything by myself. I'm gonna get more into it when I start talking about when I worked at the call center. But basically I was miserable in this relationship. Even though I was miserable, if a stranger come up to me, even if I'm not in a relationship, cause I still do this now. If a stranger come up to me and he be like, oh, um, can I have your number? Da, 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 da. No. Why? Cause you in a relationship? Yes, I am in a relationship. Y'all, I even got a fake engagement ring. Wait, hold on. I gotta go get this shit. Tell me why Fashion Nova came through with the engagement ring. They're like, yeah, I'm happily engaged. I shine this motherfucker up and I go, well, and I just be bouncing my fingers, bitch. Cause you gonna see this and you, you are not to approach me, bitch. But they still do. They can't set boundaries. I, I don't know what's wrong with them. He was like, so just give me a hug then, just give me a hug. No, why the f would I hug you? I don't know you. And I was like, no, I grabbed my door and I closed it, locked it. Because as soon as I get in my car, I close the door and lock it. He was like, roll the window down, roll the window down. No, can you leave? I cut my car on and I start backing out. Bye, what the f so I remember the next day, I had been talking to this girl. We had recently been um, talking. So we both worked 10 to seven on, and on this particular day, I'm, I'm like, girl, can you walk out with me to my car? But she is the type that like, <laughs> she is the type that like take her time on the phone. Like she do not be trying to rush. She be trying to be real thorough. So I had to end up sitting there and waiting for her because like she was the last call. She had the last call in the queue. And mind you, we can't even leave until all the calls are out of the queue. So if there's, if, even if it's seven, seven o'clock and there's like a thing full of callers left waiting they cut mind you seven o'clock they cut the phone lines off but the people that were already in line we still have to answer those calls so we leave about like 7 15 or something and i see this across the thing across like the room lingering acting like he doing shit or whatever because he see that i'm still in there right we walk out the door i kid you not like five seconds later the door open and it's him I'm like, oh my God. I'm like nudging her like, that's him, that's him, that's him. I told you he be following me, da, 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 da. She was like, oh my God, he does be following you. Oh my God, he stayed late, oh my God. He wasn't in our department, he didn't have to stay. He, was, he don't answer calls and stuff. People be gone, 7 p.m., out of there. Don't nobody linger around. We walk in and we stop and then he just like walk p past us, right? So she was like, look, 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 look. So I, I do a click, I do a quick glance at him and he mugging the sh out of me. What the hell did I do? <laughs> that nigga was upset, okay? He was mad. That nigga was mad I took away his me time with me, bitch, that I didn't want. The hell? He usually like parked all the way down where I said there's a parking garage. So he was still walking. When he was like out of earshot distance, she was like, why was he looking at you like that? And da, da, da. I have no idea. I have no idea. I was like, girl, you don't have to walk me out every night now. <laughs> the nights that she wasn't there, oh my God, I was so scared. Like we both got off days and on this day she was off. 
So 7 p.m. come, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta walk out by myself. Like, I do not wanna do this shit. I was really just like anxious to just like hurry up and get to my car. 7 p.m. come, we gotta, this day, we got a queue full of calls. And I'm like, yes, I'm gonna linger this shit the f out. I'm gonna be extra helpful. Uh, I stay on these phone calls so long. The supervisor Skyping me like, why you wanna call so long? Why you wanna call so long, y'all? They were so freaking irritating. Wait till I start talking about it. I linger this shit up to like 7.30 damn near. I get to the door i walk out the door i shit you not like two seconds later it's like this nigga it's like i don't ever see him but he be on my ass so i get to my car and i i turn my whole body because i want to be aware of my surroundings i don't want nobody to just like run up on me from behind so i turn and then like i kind of glance at him this still mugging me so he mugging the shit out of me then he smack his teeth like and then he like mumble something i'm like what the is going on here time goes by i think it's like the next week that come it had been about like three four days since he mugged this shit out of me and i'm on lunch and i'm walking outside to my car because i usually just sit in my car for lunch like i really never just really ate on lunch ever <laughs> even when i was in school i didn't eat lunch i'm walking to my car the door flies open like two seconds later and it's this nigga kurt i'm like oh hell so i look back and i keep walking and he like hey 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 Hey, let me talk to you. Let me ask you something. Okay. Did you tell somebody I was harassing you? No, what the f Basically, he like trying to check me, talking about I told somebody that I, he was harassing me. No, the f I didn't. But at the time, I was very, very calm. And he was like, mind you, he the one got the attitude. He was like, oh, okay. I was just checking because I got pulled into the office and blah, 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 blah. Okay. I don't know anything about that. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I try so hard not to be rude, but I just really did not want to talk to him because, nigga, you just mugged the f out of me and we just gonna act like you ain't do that for like two days in a row. So as, as I'm on my phone and as he's talking, as I'm saying what I'm saying, I'm like kind of walking down a little ramp thingy, like walking away. And he was like, oh, okay, well, where are you going? Where are you going? I was like, I'm on lunch. He was like, oh, I'm on lunch too. Uh, let, let's have lunch together in my car. No. I'm like, no thanks. I was actually finna go drop something off to somebody right quick. And he was like, oh, okay, okay. I have to lie because you can't you can't take the hint. When he got pulled into the office, they told him that one of my manager's people said that he was harassing like somebody over there. So y'all, after that, he don't talk to me for months. And I was honestly happy. I was like, okay, that was just a little phase. Like he he don't went on trying to pursue somebody else and like he's over it. You know, peak season is over at this point and they are letting go of the people who just not cutting it. Because basically for peak season, you they mass hire. They will hire anybody because they are just so in need of the help, right? So after peak season is over, they start like grading you on your performances and stuff. And the people that's not cutting it, they was doing mass fires, okay? So I say that to say, everybody people the the girls in our area because it was a call center so it was mostly females it was a few dudes up in there but mostly females so the girls in our area it was like slim pickings you know when you work a job and it's like a bunch of new people at this job it was a bunch of new females so like i feel like for the men that was already there they was in in heaven that was in disneyland but now these bitches are getting fired in the slim pickings again they was like all right we're gonna have to spin the block and retry the girls that didn't give us a chance the first time so mind you like i said it had been months later and i'm going to lunch on this day but on this day i can't go to my car because i got dropped off because my daughter's father dre he had to go to court so i have to go to a place that i never ever go barely know what that look like i have to go to the break room y'all any job i always hated going to the break room i do not like that shared common space because people feel like they could just come up to you and talk to you bitch i want to be left alone this is like my only break damn near that's why i be in my car the table that i was sitting at it wasn't like inside of the break room about maybe like 15 20 minutes go by and I see damn Kirk spin the corner. And I just try to act like I ain't see him. I put my head up in my phone. I damn near kind of turn the other way a little bit because I do not, I, I just be trying to make it so clear like I don't want nobody to talk to me. I just be trying to say it without actually having to say it because that 
sound rude. He walk right past me, go up in the break room, pretend like he doing something. Like I glance up at him. He pretended like he at the vending machine, whatever. I'm, I go back to my phone because I'm like, okay, he not worried about me, good. About five minutes later, this nigga ain't getting nothing from the vending machine. He ain't warm up no lunch or nothing. He come and sit by me and he was like, what you on lunch? Now, I'm thinking to myself, you know I'm on lunch. I go to lunch at the same time every day. I'm like, yeah, I'm on lunch, but it's about over. And he was like, and didn't you just go on lunch though? I'm like, so what you watching me or something? Like, what, what the fuck is you trying to, like, stop clocking me on my lives, nigga. And so then he started like asking me questions about myself, like, Every question he asked, I'm like, I'm not answering that. Why would I answer that? Because, and then he started to get like semi-sexual with the questions. You done lost your damn mind. So then he just go back to the basics and he asked for my number. No, I'm still in the same relationship. If I do not want to talk to you, I'm using that relationship excuse, period. So he sees me on Instagram and he was like, well, let me get y'all Instagram. Oh, I hurry up to click out of Instagram. I'm like, I don't even really be on Instagram like that. He was like, Man, why are you always lying? That's all you do. Why are you always lying? Let me just get you on Instagram. It's just Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, if this will make this nigga leave me alone. So I am so I go back to Instagram, tell him my Instagram name. I start getting up because I'm like, I'm about to go to the bathroom. And he was like, all right, you gonna add me on Instagram? You gonna add me? You gonna improve it, blah, blah, blah? You gonna follow back? As I'm walking away, I'm like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. So yeah, I stay in that restroom for hella long and then I go outside the back door that I usually go out. There's like a, there was a table out there until somebody broke it. There was a table out there, so I sat at that table for the rest of my lunch outside by myself. When my lunch is over, I go back to work, and then he come, he come back to work like 20 minutes after me, and then he Skyped me, and he was like, Why you never approved me on Instagram? Why you didn't approve me? I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like, I'm working, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, okay, okay approve me, don't forget, blah, blah, blah. I didn't because I was legit working and multitasking and doing all these things. So it was like closer to the end of the night and he um, and he Skyped me again. He was like, uh, why you didn't approve me on Instagram? Child, I just approved this nigga on Instagram so he could leave me alone. It was a pity proof, okay? <laughs> because the days are going by. He stopped. He stopped like pressing me. He stopped bugging me as much. Like, and he kept talking to me, but our like, our interactions would be very, very short. Looking back, little did I know, he just literally took a different approach of trying to get at me. Weeks are going by at this point and our little interactions, our little short interactions, I'm like, okay, he actually not that bad because he, he actually wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? He was a little inappropriate at times. I don't know if he just wasn't getting no booty, like he was backed up. I don't know what was going on there. But aside from that, he was actually really cool or so I thought. So around this time, I'm starting to hear whispers of things because there was this one other girl, she was really pretty. I think she was like Hispanic or something, but she had quit. And she, and from what I was hearing, like she was one of the good workers. They wanted her to stay on the team. I'm hearing whispers that somebody like was, um, that somebody made her quit, like somebody was bothering her and just like they wouldn't leave her alone. They was basically harassing her. But I don't think nothing of it, right? Y'all, I'm telling you like a few days later, it come out that it was Kirk harassing her and bothering her. And she went to our manager and told our manager and they said that they would do something about it. So they pulled him into the office. I don't know what the hell they told him, but obviously it did not work. It's crazy because that had the nerve and audacity to try to check me when he know he was harassing bitches for real. Basically the girl who quit, she had gave somebody her number and she was telling them all about it. And that person, that, that person, it just happened to be the person with the big his mouth that co-worker with the big mouth is just telling everybody they don't even like try to hide the fact that they messy like if you go ask them they'll be like yeah they'll they'll run that whole shit back to you she was just like he was just saying inappropriate things to her and he kept skyping her and he wouldn't leave her alone and she and she was just over it she just felt real uncomfortable because kirk would always stare at her and i was like oh shit this is the same shit so after that i was like uh-uh oh hell no i start ignoring kirk ass well, I actually found this out later on, but in Kirk's department, they can take a lunch whenever they want to. So when Kirk would see me on lunch, and mind you, Kirk knew when I was at lunch because on Skype, if you look up somebody's name or you already Skyping them, you have to change like your um, code basically to at lunch or at the rest or a restroom break or break, you know? Anybody can 
can see what you're doing because you have to go offline or you have to go into like break mode, lunch mode, whatever, restroom mode, whatever. Also on Skype, it shows how long you've been away from your computer. So once you put yourself in lunch, a, a timer starts. If you come back from lunch late as hell, everybody's gonna know you was late as hell from lunch. So I feel like he went on Skype, seen that I was on lunch and he took his lunch. I go on lunch this day and I'm walking outside to my car as I always do, same routine, and this, come out walking behind me and he was like why are you not talking to me like what's wrong with you what's the problem i was just like what are you talking about like we we don't even really talk like that he acting like we talking text every fucking day you acting funny you not talking to me blah 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 so i said you hear what's going around like the building and he was like no what well, i know i promise you i know he heard this because this workplace was so messy i know he heard these rumors people are saying you made so-and-so quit because like you was harassing her you kept skyping her and da, da 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 man it wasn't even like that we was mutually talking nobody was harassing that girl she was conceited as fuck and she thought i wanted her in a way that i didn't even really want her and, and she took that and ran with it and blah 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 so i'm like this nigga must think i'm stupid like but at the same time even though like even though he, he did all that creepy shit to me in the beginning my brain didn't even realize like bitch he's he's only taking a different approach to come at you like he he's not really this cool ass person bitch he's pretending my brain did not register that like he really got me i really see how females be getting got like that it had been like i don't know how long since he asked for my number like he was just acting like a cool ass person and he convinced me like i got it wrong like i got it misconstrued i was viewing him in the wrong way and blah 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 I I still backed up from him because like, I don't know. Our interactions was already short. Now I'm keeping it extra short and I kept it like that for a while. Because like I said, I'm not even here to make friends. Like, damn. I, I honestly, half the time I was talking to him, it was like out of pity. Even more time go by now and it's like close to spring. By this time we had really stopped talking. Like there was no beef or nothing. Like he, he wasn't mugging me and shit like that. So yeah, one day again, I was sitting outside at the table on my 15 minute break and he come and he come outside. He see me at the table, he sit down at the table. He was like- I just wanna talk to you. I just want you to see that I'm not like the kind of person that you think I am. I'm actually like a really good dude. I'm a really good person to just be friends with or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Just going on and on, giving me this little speech that he probably f rehearsed. So I'm like, okay. I'm a little confused because he would do this shit like, he would not talk for months and then he would just think that he could start talking to me again out the blue. He was really trying to play nice guy hard. So, so hard to the point like, he confused me. Like I was just thrown off like, nigga, we haven't really even, said more than two words to each other in months so like why all of a sudden you come into this realization that you want me to see what kind of person you are and that like why he's trying to talk my head off my whole 15 minute break as he talking i'm thinking in my head like damn i just be really coming out here to chill by myself like, i just be wanting peace from the college and then i gotta keep talking nigga i don't want to talk to nobody I talk all day on the phone. I don't want to talk to nobody on my break, my lunch, my nothing. So I'm like, oh, my, my 15 minute break over, whatever. And he was like, all right, all right, that's cool, whatever. So I, I walk in, my 15 minute break wasn't over, but I spent the rest of it in the bathroom because I, I just really felt like that's the only place I could fully get away from him. I go back to my desk, right? Mind you, my 15 minute break be like in the morning. So a few hours later, he Skyped me and he was like, hey, what time you go to lunch? I want to talk to you. And it's like, I can't even lie to him because he gonna see when I put myself in lunch and come find me anyway. So I can't even lie. So I'm like, I go to lunch at this time. And like, what do you want to talk about? He was like, okay, can we go to lunch together? And I was like, y'all, against my better judgment, I was like, okay. And just because I was curious, he was making it sound like it was something like kind of important. But then again, what the f important do he have to tell me? So yeah, I go to lunch. I'm thinking we gonna like sit outside at that table and like talk. I'm sitting outside at the table. He come outside and he was like, no, nah, I don't want to sit at the table. Um, can we sit in my car? Because you know, people will talk and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nigga, you ain't give a shit about people talking when you be following me around and shit like the lost damn puppy half the time. But I was like, okay. So y'all, we walk all the way down to the damn parking garage, sit in his car, and he just start talking, like telling me about his life. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to find a new job. He's telling me all types. He just talking, talking, talking. And I'm like, is this, 
I'm, I'm just feeling stupid as hell because I could be up in my car chilling, taking a nap or something. Meanwhile, I'm just in this nigga car listening to him talk about his stuff. And I'm just like, damn. I knew this nigga ain't have nothing important to talk about. So I guess like the important thing he wanted to tell me is that he about to quit the, the cost in a job. You gotta stipe me that. You stipe me everything else. The hell? So that's that's really all we talk about the whole time. Like I, I wasn't even really talking whatever. I, at this point, I don't even know if that nigga was pretending to be cool or what, but he could be cool. So, you know, like, it was whatever. So I said something like, okay, well, I'm about to go to the vending machine. Like, I want some chips or something. And he was like, hey, oh, um, you want to go get food? Let's go get food. I'm like, nah, I just want some chips or something. Like, I'm not really that hungry. I just want, like, something to put on my stomach. So I'm about to go to the vending machine just to, like, get out his car or whatever. So he was like, yeah, I'm about to go back in, too. So I I'm getting out the car, and this nigga like, oh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? You know, when, when somebody lose something and they looking for something, and you just, like, try, like, you just, like, looking around, like, I hope you find it, nigga. I don't know what the fuck. So he was like, man, can you call my phone for me? Like, I don't, I don't even know the last time I had it. Like he didn't touch his phone this whole time. So I'm kind of believing him. And no, I didn't call private because he was just like in such a like panic. And then when people panic, bitch, I start to panic. So I'm like, okay, what's the number? What's the number? Got my ass. Gotcha, bitch. Oh, he give me his number. I call it. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. And then like I hear something vibrating under the seat. So I guess the phone fell under the seat. I don't. I don't fucking know. Like, like honestly, I feel like if I was in a scary movie, I would be one of the first people to die because I'd be having like slow moments, and I'm way too nice. I would be out of there. I would be out of there. So yeah, I go back to work, right? Not even thinking like I called this nigga, he got my number, not even like registering that part, right? I'm at work, my phone is in my purse because mind you, you can't have your phone out. So I hear my phone vibrate twice. So the two managers and the supervisors, they went on lunch every day at the same time. So I'm like, I can't wait for their ass to go to lunch so I can check my phone. So they ended up going to lunch. I checked my phone in and I'm like, who is this? And he was like, this Kirk saved my number. Nigga! This motherfucker here. And he just start texting me like, we cool, bro. Stop, quit texting me. I'm like, I gotta put my phone up. We can't have our phones out, blah, blah, blah. Just making up a lie or whatever. And he was like, so-and-so still at lunch, blah, blah. You know, just going back and forth, just really trying to hold the conversation. I'm not holding this conversation. Let me pause back to my relationship because some shit had went down. Dre was doing some fuck shit as usual. I'm not gonna be miserable in this relationship and you over here doing fuck shit too and you want me to stay faithful in this relationship. So this is when I start kind of entertaining Kirk out of spite. Don't ever entertain nobody out of spite. Especially when it's a person you don't like because you don't get shit out of it. Take it from me, don't do it because it's pointless. Around this time is when he started like replying to my stories and stuff like that. And honestly, he started turning back into his perverted self. I made a post and I reposted something where somebody said, good to get you another chance. And I said, I'm gonna have to disagree. He swiped up and he was like, guess that's why I get another chance with the smirking face. Then I posted me being on the phone with somebody for two hours. And I was like, our combos get real. We talk about everything. And he was like, I was sleep when you text me back, my bad. Mind you, wait, let me just pause right here and tell y'all how weird these are. Like, first of all, will have a whole entire conversation with themselves in your DMs and in your text messages. Let me just start there because I've seen it before. I've literally seen it. I've literally had somebody in my DMs talking to themselves as if we were talking to each other. I've had dudes text me, your number's still the same, that never ever had my number. I've never spoken two words to them. But you DMing me talking about, is my number still the same? So when he said, I was sleep when you text me back, there was no text back. I'm not gonna say that I was like never texting him because we did text a little bit. But in this instant, there was no text back. And I was like, this nigga is weird. I said, IDK how your dick is and I don't care. And I definitely said, I'm gonna have to disagree. And this nigga said, from the looks of it, you think it'll be good, laugh my ass off. Then he put the gorilla emoji. Oh, 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 oh. Let me back up, let me back up. Cause I forgot this part, I forgot this part. So y'all, one day I'm at work and I had got moved to where like my back be facing him. So now if he Skype me, he can see if I open it or whatever. So yeah, he Skype me and he was like, check your phone. And I was like, why? 
and he was like just go um he was like just check it out i was like i can't like we really cannot have our phones out because they were writing people up for having their phones out so he was like go to the restroom i'm like why like what what why do i need to go to the restroom can it wait he was like, like no you need to go look at the message i sent you I'm like okay I put myself in restroom. I go to the restroom. And as I'm walking to the restroom, I'm, I open his message. Y'all, it's a picture of his dick. Why do men send unsolicited pictures of they Like, you gotta have a big dick to do that. That's big energy shit. You cannot have no small one just sending that picture around. It was like, y'all, I don't even know. Should I say this on here? Short and wide, that's all I'm gonna say. And then the picture was black and white, so like you edited the picture and then sent it to me. Like what did you edit out? Who edits their news before? Like you know, like, I mean, I guess some people would edit their news, but dudes, I, I don't, I wouldn't think that dudes would edit their picture before sending it out. Y'all, I deleted that damn picture so quick. I went back to my desk and I pretended like nothing happened. He Skyped me again, he was like, Did you like what you see? I said, don't ever send me no picture again. Ever. So basically the next day I was off of work and then he started replying to my stories because he couldn't bug me at work. So yeah, that's what he was like. Um, from the looks of it, you think it'll be good. I said, ID case, sweetie, it got deleted quicker. It got deleted quicker than I looked at it. This nigga was like, yeah, whatever, you ain't got a front. Front from what? I said, I don't got a front. If I wanted from you, you would know. And then like after this conversation, he just got y'all. This nigga just started saying some off the wall sh Um, I, just, I don't even know if I could say this kind of stuff on here. Eating, you know what, putting the tongue emojis and all types of sh And I'm just like, stop. And he was like, nah, cause you like it. And I was like, no, I don't. I need to stop talking to him because he jumped from 10 to 20 and it's just like you need to go get you some honestly because that's this is not how people interact with each other like at one point all the stuff that he was saying to me was sexual so i'm already not interested in you and everything that's coming out your mouth is sexual you telling me your intentions right there but at the same time it was my fault for even pretending to like be interested in you a little bit not even be interested just it was my fault for playing with you because i never said like oh yeah i'm trying to be with you and that that was him. This nigga used to say shit like, Yeah, we can work our way into a relationship. The sexual will come later. The sexual ain't coming never because I'm not being in no relationship with you. Basically, it was my fault for even playing with him and doing some shit out of spite. That's why you do not talk to people out of spite. Basically, at one point, he would just be Skyping me. I would stop opening his Skypes and he could see that because he sat behind me. Also, let me clear up. He didn't sit directly behind me. My back was facing him and he sat two rows back so he could see he could see my computer. And I would stop um, DMing him back on Instagram because for what? Uh, it came to a point like where he was moving, they was moving him behind me, like directly behind me. And I honestly just did not want to be that close to him because prior to them moving him, this n would just be like bothering me, trying to take his breaks at the same time as me, going to his um, lunch at the same time as me, come bothering me at my car, knocking on my window, talking my roll down the window. I'm like, no, just bothering the hell out of me, acting extra weird. And then when he finally started getting a hint, it was back to mugging me. So so one night I'm leaving at seven o'clock. This was before they moved him directly behind me. So one night again, I'm leaving at seven o'clock. Nobody there to walk me out. So I'm leaving, I'm walking out. I'm, I'm like damn near at my car. This comes speed walking out the door. Like um, when I tell you that door flung open, I was like, what the f He was like, wait, 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 why you haven't been talking to me? Mind you, I'm not even at my car yet. I'm still kind of walking to my car. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Because like, I really don't want to talk at all. So I guess this nigga started acting oblivious and he was like, well, where my hug at? Where my hug at? You haven't hugged me. As if we hug. We, ha we have never hugged besides that one time he forced a hug on me so he like grabs me around my waist and he hugs me right and then he squeezes my butt so i push up off of him i'm like well, what the fuck are you doing he was like you know you like it da, da, da. bruh i don't know if he used to just like get in what he want all the time but that's literally how he act my phone started ringing i'm like thank you jesus my phone started ringing it's dre <clears throat> he trying to see where I was. He needed the car for something. So I'm talking on the phone with him. Y'all, I don't even acknowledge Kirk ass no more. I get up in my car. I'm on the phone. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go pick her up right now, blah, blah, blah. I get in the car, close my door, and drive off like he wasn't just talking to me. Every since that day, he was mugging the f out of me, just doing weird shit, like I said, tapping on my window. He already has that face of a creepy ass nigga. So when he, like, mug and stare and just put 
extra on the creepy it was it was extra fucking creepy so yeah he moved behind me and i'm like no 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 he's gonna keep bothering me by my manager's lunchtime he was already sitting behind me so they left and this nigga just kept like, this nigga roll his chair back and touch my shoulder like this and like nudge my shoulder and i'm like and I turned around, I don't say shit to him. Y'all, like, I'm telling you, I tried to, like, have him sit directly behind me and not make it a big deal, but he just kept bothering me. This is, like, the last words we had to each other. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm walking outside, right? This is when I used to smoke cigarettes. I'm walking outside, I'm on lunch, I'm about to go to the gas station up the street, give me some cigarettes and some gas because I didn't have no fucking gas. So, before I can even get to the car, y'all already know who on my ass. Kurt. Like, y'all, I promise you, everything was so f repetitive. Like, I didn't even have the energy for it no more. Because at this point, you always coming up to me talking about why you acting funny, why you acting funny. Boy, we haven't even talked in weeks, damn near months. So, let that sh go. Please let it go. Like, it's not like we had a relationship and all this sh And we was just texting every day, all day. Like, no, bro, you Skype me sometimes. We should, we, we had that one lunch in your car, like... Let that sh go, bruh. That like, I was really understanding what that girl was talking about. This nigga could, this nigga knew how to make you so fing uncomfortable. And another weird thing is that I forgot to mention is sometimes he would come up to me as if we did talk all day, every day, and like we had, and like we were in a relationship. Like, so one time I remember he like mugged the sh out of me and was just like mugging me, looking at me crazy all fing day. And then he came up to me like, What's up? How you been? How you been doing? Da 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 the fuck what is that is that like a personality disorder because he always had me confused so this day yeah he come up to me before i could even get to my damn car mind you we hadn't talked in hella long he know i wasn't talking to him he seen me ignoring his skypes everything so he come up to me and he was like so when you going to invite me over to your house i cannot make this shit up this is when i was like this man is a psychopath so I'm like, what? I'm confused that he even talking to me because we do not talk and now you're coming up to me talking about when I'm gonna invite you to my home. So I'm like, so you will never come to my house. I'm still walking, mind you. And he was like, all right then, I'm gonna just follow you home. That did it for me. So I'm like, okay, you can do that, but I have the right to defend myself in my home and I do have a I keep walking, this nigga stopped walking with me. He was like, man, ain't nobody scared of that. Ain't nobody scared of no Da, 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 da. It was like he was really fucking crazy. I don't know if I'm explaining this good enough for y'all to understand, but I really believe like something was off with him. I really believe that he would follow me home. So that night I was like so damn paranoid going home. Like I was checking my surroundings. I was making unnecessary turns. Like it was just, it was ridiculous. It took me hella long to pick up my daughter. Like it's honestly not even all the way him. Like you cannot make that type of threat to me because I'm already a super paranoid ass person. The next day when I get to work, I wait till the supervisor come in because I feel like he the easiest to talk to. And I just talked to him and I'm like, can I move my seat because I'm really uncomfortable sitting here. And he was like, why, why, why do you want to move your seat? I'm just like, can you just not, like, can I just move my seat? Like, I really don't want to explain. And he was like, well, when I asked so-and-so, like the other manager for you to move your seat, they're going to want an explanation on why you want to move your seat. So I'm like, please, like, I don't want to get into it. And he was like, is somebody bothering you? And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I really just didn't want a problem at all. I'm not one to even like be reporting people, which I fucking should have, but I'm not one to even do that kind of shit. Like, I just like to, just like to move quietly. Like, the conversation was so damn long. It took hella long for him to get it out of me. But eventually I was like, yeah, somebody is bothering me. He was like, who, who, who is it? Who's bothering you? I'm pretty sure I deleted this next clip on an accident, but we was just basically going back and forth. And I finally told him that Kirk was the one bothering me. And his reaction was like surprised, but then again, he wasn't surprised. Like, what is he doing to bother you? And I was like, oh my God, you really got to tell the manager like word for word, everything on why I need to move my seat. Basically, he was like, yeah. So basically I told him, but I was like, please do not tell the manager like everything I'm telling you. Like just sum it up in a way that's unproblematic because I just really want to move. I don't want no issues. The workplace was so messy. Then he was saying if it was harassment, I would have to fill out like some type of paperwork. I was really just not trying to go through all that. I was trying to keep it unproblematic and keep everything everybody out the business after i told him like the majority of it he was looking really shocked he was like kirk is doing that kirk and i'm like yes kirk 
he wouldn't tell me why. So I knew like I was missing something. I was like, what the hell am I missing? Eventually they let me move my seat. They moved me um, on the road with the supervisor, but then they moved me again cause they felt like I was too close to my work bestie and we used to clown in there. Eventually thanks to like another coworker and the big mouth coworker, Chai, I found out Kirk was a damn pastor. The pastor of a church. He was married with I don't know how many kids. And mind you, when we was sitting in his car at one time and he was telling me about his life story, he conveniently left out all three of them huge things. I was like, what the f And mind you, when I went to go get the screenshots off of Instagram for this sh this nigga now has pastor in his um, Instagram name. Before it wasn't pastor nothing, it was just his name. Now he got pastor in it. Chai, I was like, let me creep up on homeboy page. Chai, he done posted all his kids, which was not there before. His wife, oh my God. I was like, oh my God. Y'all, I promise you, I didn't even believe it at first. I did not even believe he was a pastor at first. And I wanted to, he said, he, mind you, at this point, he was still working there. I wanted to message him so bad, like, you a and pastor so yeah the big mouth um co-worker told me that and then um one of the other co-workers told me one that had been there for hella long so i'm like yeah this gotta be the truth and then also come to find out he did this to almost every female that worked there like the new females not the old females that have been there the new ones and i'm like why does he even still have a job if he get this many complaints, why do he even still have a job? I'm so confused. So yeah, when my seat got moved, I guess he got nervous. Like every day, I feel like every day he was looking like in distress or some sh Until one day I saw him, I seen him like packing up his area, but mind you, his whole department was packing up the area because they were switching sides. They were switching sides of the room, right? But he packed up his area and then after that, I never seen him again. So I guess he quit, which he was talking about quitting because he was about to get a new job. But he told me when he was gonna quit and he quit like two months earlier than what he told me. And I feel like it was because he thought I was gonna go to the managers and tell them that he was harassing me, which I didn't because that supervisor, he, he kept his word and he didn't tell like the manager everything I told him because I didn't want no problems. I, I don't know why. I don't know why like women do that because I feel like we should speak up, speak up and speak out more. I just do not like that kind of drama and shit. Basically, I named that Kirk because he was a cheater and a damn pastor. <laughs> uh, I know Kirk Franklin ain't no damn pastor, but close enough. <laughs> When, he, when we were sitting by each other, it was to the point where I didn't even want to go to damn work just because he was really a f nuisance. Like, then he threatened to follow me home and shit. Like, I don't know what reaction he was trying to get out of me, but that was not, you. that was creepy as hell. I promise you, like, I, at one point, I really felt like this dude was stalking me because every time I was outside, every time I looked up, this car was always parked by mine. Like, I, like when I'm on lunch in my car, he on lunch in his car just looking at me. And I was like, what the f Is this a joke? This stop, this literally stopped parking in the parking garage to park anywhere next to me, sometimes right next to me. And I would move my car on my lunch or on my break or some shit because at this time, at this point, I know what your car looked like. So why is it always by mine? Be honestly, this should be a lesson. Do not even, do not play with people you have no interest in. That was my fault because if that shit would have went wrong, it, it kind of would have been my fault because I entertained the shit instead of sh shutting that shit down. That's the story. And I'm gonna go on ahead and end this story right here because I gotta go get my hair rebraided and I'm not trying to be late. So yeah, if you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button and I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Bye. Y'all got time. Yes, hope I can bust a fucking rhyme. I need a hobby. So yeah. We back with another video. We back with another story time. Did I have to smack like that? Like, I don't understand when niggas be thinking, like they be thinking that God's gift to women. Everybody don't want you. They're honestly weird. And I honestly wish they would leave. Like the planet, the whole, all of them. 
I wish they would leave the whole planet. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, he was like, yeah, my name is Kirk. <laughs> Why did I? That hurt. Cause if y'all saw my other video, I got that blue set. Now I got me some blue nails. Should I wear it together? Probably not. Will I wear it together? I probably will. Let me put these chains down. Ooh, ow, that hurt my little finger. My little finger. I bought this case about like five years ago. I bought this case about like four or five years ago and it's still intact. Then I bought the same exact case for my phone that I have now. I noticed it was made a little different and that motherfucker is broke. It's hanging on by a thread. I think I paid more for the case that I just bought and it was like horrible quality. This is damn near an OtterBox, but it's not an OtterBox. It's, um, it's not an OtterBox, it's like LifeProof. Like who the fuck told LifeProof to switch it up? LifeProof, I'm coming for you. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah. Cause I don't give a fuck. This is going on the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Cause black lives matter. But that's not happening. Do I say that? Oh my God. If that phone is broken. Very much slowly <laughs> because I was not looking forward to this. Okay, so there's still some people like, what the fuck? I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb. Bro, I'm not saving your fucking number. I'm not saving your fucking number. Period. 